You are listening to an entertainment program put together by a company called Financial Ineptitude. Anything said on this show is not an endorsement or professional advice. Would you really want to tell a court of law you were suing us because you thought taking financial advice from two idiots on a podcast put out by Financial Ineptitude was a good idea? Really? Clown hats on your face. Hello and welcome. Step right in, come one, come all. I'm shopkeeper Dan, and with me as always is Kyle, creator of FinancialNeptitude.com. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing great. Been looking forward to this one. Got a lot to talk about when we get to the options. Oh yeah, nothing but options talk on my mind. Also, <laughs> we uh, we got paid. Oh, we got paid! Somebody wanted us to do a featured spot, so listen for the bell for that. Very excited about that. Come on into the shop with us today, folks. Sit back, relax, and hedge against the stock machine. We want to welcome any new listeners just joining us. We're here to smash our way into a complete set of fine china, sharing our ever-growing strategies for trying to maximize those gains and cut those losses and if you are new to the shop and stock trading in general you can always check out the knowledge center on financialineptitude.com or you can give our beginning trading episode a listen we'll have that link in the episode description but the best place to be is definitely our discord server kyle and i are on there every day and it's really just an awesome place to be and uh, when you do join that server send us a private message or email with your mailing address and We'll send you a smash it yourself mug straight from the shop. We're really glad you're here. We have a lot of fun, and it's it's always better with friends. Also, uh, the the long anticipated uh, options beginning episode, or how do you want to word that? Beginning options episode. Introduction to options. Yeah, that works. Uh, we should be setting up to record that tomorrow. So we decided. Yeah, tomorrow. Oh yeah, that's coming. That's ooh gonna be hot off the press hopefully that one will either be this this wednesday or next wednesday we've got one more interview scheduled on tuesday also so we'll see which one sounds the best which, yeah which one drops first <laughs> 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 and in further show news uh we we had a little uh, kerfuffle with twitter i just found out about <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah so trying to grow our listener base or just our reach, you know, every now and then we promote a couple tweets when we collect some money from, you know, uh, featured content or from our sponsors. Getting paid! So I tried to promote the one that we did about the cannabis, what was it the cannabis industry with their giant carbon footprint? Yes, <laughs> from indoor growing. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was funny. We made a good joke. Big business, you know? Yeah, yeah. There's some irony there. Uh, apparently, Twitter flagged that because it's uh, it falls under whatever they call their activist clause or, or something. <laughs> I guess they thought we were trying to make some kind of environmental statement. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, lighten up, Twitter. Yes, we are the eco-warriors of the China <laughs> shop. <laughs> Oh, my God. Your pot growth must be carbon yeah. neutral now. So, oh, Lord. Careful, Dan. I don't know. Maybe that's the <laughs> listeners we're getting. I have no idea. <laughs> I thought we were a, thought we were a trading show. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm still going to be trading pot stocks. Yeah. Same here. Fucking Twitter. I think that's fucking hilarious. And, and Kyle, what were the results of our latest Twitter poll? All right. Last week's Twitter poll was... Uh, retail investors, if they were going to stay in the market once uh, everything went back to normal or if they were going to pull out. Uh, we had 60 to 40 basically saying that retail investors are in the market deep. So, <laughs> sentiment is that they're not going. They are not pulling out. They're not pulling out. <laughs> so, oh, the <laughs> child is innuendo. Uh, <laughs> right, right. And uh, yeah, keep, keep listening, folks. We're going to have another Twitter poll. We'll, we'll we'll drop it when it's somewhere organic, in the show when it <laughs> somewhere when it comes up yeah we're glad you're with us folks we've got a hot spicy hair raising show for you today lots of market moving news plenty of stocks on the radar and more options than a pig building a house to outwit a wolf three but uh, yeah we got more than three yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more than three all right, I think. All right, all right. more options than a duck at a goose party duck 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 uh I don't get that one. Yeah, yeah, I may have been drinking when I wrote that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you were. How about, how about mine? Uh, more options than soda flavors at a firehouse subs. I, I've never been to a firehouse subs. Oh, really? It's got one dispenser and like 130 different options. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, people are going to think that firehouse <laughs> subs paid us to talk about them, which I'm open to. If you work for firehouse subs and you want to advertise on our show, let me know. I would do it for sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and please, folks, reach out to us. We just can't wait for your messages and comments on Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, Discord, 
uh, your emails at tubles at financialinstitute.com, your phone calls to 725-22-BULLS. Maybe you got a hot stock tip. Maybe you want to tell us about a great trade you made, or maybe your sports team just lost the big game. It doesn't matter. We love it when you reach out. They scored a goal unit basket. (laughs) They did score a goal (laughs) unit basket. (laughs) Well, Kyle, you know know what the next uh, section of the show is, right? Uh, Yeah, rapidly becoming my least favorite segment. Yeah, we're just going to start calling this Kyle's Crying Corner. Hey, I don't know why you're so uh, so cocky. I think you slipped below the random stock also. <laughs> I am still $2 above the random stock, but we'll get there. We'll get there. All right. Well, I... Well, you want to intro the bet or not? Yeah, it's the bet segment, and Kyle's going first. Kyle, what was your bet pick? <laughs> PLTR Planeteer. Uh, they opened the week at 27.35. They jumped up about 10 cents from there at open, and they never touched that again. <laughs> 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 I just missed the stop loss, so it wasn't as bad as it could have been. It closed at 24.32. 24.32. Uh, that takes my total from 482.53 all the way down to 429.07. But I did get a little stimulus from a side bet that Dan wanted to make. Mm, mm-hmm. Nice mm-hmm. fifteen dollars on a, a ill-advised bet that Dan made. So you want to tell him about that? Yeah, Sundial earnings was coming out on uh, Wednesday or Thursday. I think, I think it was Wednesday after the bell. Mm-hmm. And I bought a straddle, and we bet fifteen dollars of our bet money that uh, I w- I was betting that I would make a profit on the straddle, and Kyle was saying I wouldn't. And my and and I cleared this ahead of time. My idea was it, whether it shoots up or down after the earnings, I can sell one leg of that straddle, and and turn a profit. I had just done it with GE and Ford the mm-hmm. previous week. Well, Sundial earnings came out. They were great. Shot up from like a dollar forty something to a dollar seventy. I think it peaked at a dollar seventy two. But that was all after market. Yep. So the options didn't move. And when it opens up the next day, it's back down to a buck fifty. So I did not make any money, and Kyle wins that side bet, which brings his total up to what four hundred forty-four dollars seven cents. You know what? I actually didn't do the math on that. I just said plus fifteen. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you're at four forty-four. Oh seven. And then if anybody's listening now and confused and trying to remember when they we talked about that side, but it was actually in our Discord chat. So uh, if you want to be yeah. privy to those conversations, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> I uh, my bet pick was Boeing B A. They mm-hmm. uh, they they were hitting new highs last week, and I bet on them, and they opened a two seventy four seventeen, and they just uh, had a nice slow steady slide down the whole week. <laughs> <laughs> for for a minute there, it looked like they tur- were turning around in the middle of the week, but no, they ended uh, the week at $255.82 for a drop of about 7%. Brings my total down to $485.90, and then I lost the bet. So I am now at $470.90. I forgot uh, to check the, uh, the news. Did, did another engine fall out of the sky, or do they just, uh, just falling <laughs> in general? <laughs> Yeah, I think that they had a good run for a week and then <laughs> turned around and let it all back out. Uh, our random yeah. random pick was NIU, opened at forty one sixty one, closed at forty dollars at seven cents. So that one only went down uh, just under four percent. And because random doesn't take side bets, as we found out last I've week, I've tried. Uh, I've tried. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that that puts random at four hundred sixty eight dollars sixty nine cents. I have four sixty eight seventy six. Seventy six. All right. Well, that that works too. Uh, four sixty eight seventy six, which means I am two dollars and fourteen cents ahead of the random. <laughs> well, folks, if you have any idea for some consequences, if we do both lose to this random, uh, make sure you get them sent our way. Definitely looks likely. <laughs> yeah, it's not looking great. <laughs> Okay, all right, so that wraps up the bet. Stay tuned at the end of the episode. We're going to make a new bet. Keep it exciting. I've got a good pick this week. I'm liking mine. I think I've got a good one, too. Okay, all right. I can't wait to get there. But first, we got to talk about some news. Well, we all know why we're listening today. The shop is bursting with the week to replace. So sit back, we got some market affairs. 
get some stories for the fools and the bears. Clowns running company, laws change overnight. Here we are. It's time for China Shop News. Yeah, now it's time for China Shop News. All right, Dan, what do you got for the news? Oh, <laughs> you want me to start? I thought you were going to start with the... Uh... I thought you were going to start, and I was going to just piggyback on it. Okay, well... Huh. God damn, why do we bother prepping? I swear <laughs> when we prepped, you said, uh, yeah, I've got a thing about this, and you can you can piggyback off of it, but no. I'll, I'll... No, no, no. Okay. <clears throat> just... Yeah, uh, Jerome Powell, uh, that uh, head of the Federal Reserve, testifying before Congress twice this week. Uh, and, and, a, and I saw a number that there's going to be over a dozen other Fed officials talking and, uh, this week. So we're going to get a lot of movement and, and anxiety about you know, any time these huge bankers that are running uh, our currency get up and speak. It, it, it seems like uh, things happen. I assume they're they're wanting to talk more about the interest rates. Uh, interest rates. I guess we we we've had new economic data, with new job numbers come out in the last uh, uh, week. Um, they're, we're going to have more numbers on uh, personal consumption expenditures, inflation data. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just the health, general health of the recovery of the economy is is really on point and being talked about. I think we've been seeing uh, the last couple of weeks. You know, as those interest rates are climbing, the Nasdaq just seems to keep getting hammered because of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, luckily the yields have fell off their peak Friday, but man, if government doesn't you know do something about the way they're just blowing through money right now i don't know uh i don't know how that gets better and it looks like uh, bond yields hit 1.75 percent this week that probably had a lot to do with the uh, the nasdaq sliding is that good what, what, i don't know anything about bonds <laughs> okay so i tried to do some research because i also was like what is happening i want to be informed so i guess if the yield is going up, mm-hmm. that means bond prices are going down. Okay. So if the yield rises when the, the quality is falling and people's ri- people want to be more risk averse, which drops the demand for the bond, which drives the prices down. So they raise the yield to make it more attractive for people to buy. So kind of like how if you get a, uh, like a credit card and you have shit credit, you're going to have to pay an outrageous interest rate on that because uh, you're less, I guess your your investment is more risky. Is that kind of? Yeah, you're the more okay. risky. You would be, if you're talking credit cards, you would be the bond. You're more risky. So, but it would be charging interest, but bonds collect it. Mm. I think the, the yield is the indicator. I don't think it's the yield that is driving the prices down in the market. I think it's as confidence is lost, right? We, we see that yield go up and it's that loss of confidence is why we're seeing a big tech sell off. See, I thought it might have something to do with the fact that, you know, most tech, uh, at least most of the companies in the uh, NASDAQ are younger companies and maybe rely more on debt. So mm. my thought was that maybe as those rates are going up, that makes it harder for them to borrow or more expensive for them mm. to borrow. Probably all of it put together. It, yeah, more than likely. I also did no research like you did, so <laughs> I was just speculating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a lot of shit with those bond yields. Uh, is, that, is that our Twitter poll for this week? Yeah, that would. I think that would be a good, good Twitter poll. Uh, bond yields, are they going to end the week up or down? I like it. All right. And the other thing uh, is is those stimulus checks have really started coming out and started hitting people's bank accounts. I know I got yeah. mine. Speaking, of, yeah, I got mine too. Uh, and speaking of that, uh, I saw something pop up the other day saying that cannabis companies are anticipating an added sales bump because of those stimmy checks coming out. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll put oh. the link to that one in the description. But I was looking at the the charts that they had of the. Uh, cannabis sales and like each time a stimmy check came out you can see a big spike in pot sales right at the same time (laughs) oh my goodness that's funny so might be a good time to get into some marijuana right now you might get to see a little bump when their earnings start coming out yeah the next quarter's earnings uh what else you got one of the other things i came across today that sparked my interest uh porsche the german luxury car maker they're a p-o-a-h-y on the american exchange Mm -hmm. i guess their main exchange is the frankfurt exchange okay that's where their stock's really getting traded so this is like a shadow american stock but it does have a dividend so yeah you could still invest in porsche on on the american exchanges but anyway they are pushing up against a five-year high right now Mm -hmm. on their on their stock that, that i noticed on their chart the article that got my attention, what they were talking about, 80% of their fleet, they are going to be electric by uh, 2030, by 2030. Is Porsche its own company or is it? I thought it might be owned by like Volkswagen or something. Did I, am I remembering that wrong? You, you are. Porsche actually owns Volkswagen. 
Oh, okay. But Volkswagen also has yeah. something that's getting traded because I saw that their stock has been going kind of nuts too. I mean, they're not traded as Volkswagen anymore. There was some kind of merger that did happen. Maybe that's what the that uh, story was referring to. I don't know if they still do, but at one time Porsche owned a controlling interest in Volkswagen and they caused a short squeeze back in uh, 2007 or 2008. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But yeah, Volkswagen apparently has been going kind of nutso too, and I'm, I wonder why. I guess they're not related. I, I don't know. They all, they, Volkswagen's also pushing uh, electric stuff. Uh, maybe that's why. So Porsche said that 17% of their current sales involve electrified cars, like fully electric or hybrid electrics. So they expect to that, that to be growing. Uh, but they did say that they are not going to make the, the classic Porsche 911 an electric vehicle. They specifically said the Porsche 911 will be the last if we ever even do it, hmm. uh, according to CEO Oliver Bloom. That's it. I'm not buying one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because they're keeping a combustion engine? Yep, that's the only reason. It's the only reason why I'm not going to buy a Porsche. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, you, you know, so you got to draw a line in the sand, Kyle. Yeah, we're not getting paid that much yet. <laughs> yeah, Porsche Porsche just lost my business, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I thought that was interesting. Yeah. At first, it really seemed like they were just like, no, it's a classic. We want to keep it the same. But when I dug a little deeper, it turns out it's just because of the shape of the car and where they mm -hmm. put the engine, it would be too back heavy, the all electric. Uh, right. Oh, I figured it'd probably have something to do with the engineering of it. They'd probably have to completely redesign it. It wouldn't be the same car anymore. <laughs> the car, if it, they make an electric version, it would not have the balance to be able to drive. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or it'd just be completely different. Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't look like a 911. Yeah. All right. Well, I've got one more thing I just wanted to touch on. I was, spec or I was asking the question, and I think it was in Discord, wondering what happened or what Ant Group's IPO value uh, with all the trouble that Bob has been getting into, uh, you know, what, what's going on with it, if it had fallen or what. Uh, I did see an article pop up shortly after I was asking that question uh, saying that the value is now somewhere around $200 billion, which if you remember mm -hmm. from its high was at 315 Ouch. at one point. So, yeah, it's been, it's been getting hit pretty hard. I mean, that's still a nice payday for... <laughs> whoever's involved in that IPO. Mm -hmm. I don't think they can complain too much. I mean, it's still a massive, massive uh, valuation. But yeah, and then Baba's troubles, it looks like, are still continuing. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, but I guess uh, China told them they needed to divest their holdings in any of their media corporations. or Divest in their media corporations. Uh, their media holdings. Their media holdings. So they don't want them to be a conglomerate. They're, they're, they're saying you got to be a one business focus kind of company. It, it really looks like they're trying to break them up. I think that they've gotten too powerful, too big, and they're just trying to do whatever they can to curb their influence. Mm, wow. So I don't know if that means they just have some holdings they need to sell off or if they're going to be looking to spin off some companies like uh, they do with like a monopoly breakup. Right, right. You know, it is China. They do things different. The government might just say, we own that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's ours now. Thank you. Yeah. You, you did a, you did a good, great job making this. Hey, they are offered if you recall <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can have whatever you want just uh just let us keep making money please that's that's right they did say that <laughs> oh that's funny oh all right you got anything else for news or is it time to move on uh, i got one last thing um blackstone bx mm -hmm. uh trading it's trade at 7247 they just announced the closing of uh it's the first growth equity fund uh they raised Four and a half billion dollars from private sources like institutional investors and pension funds and such. Mm -hmm. To quote them, it's the largest first time growth equity private fund raised in history. So hmm. uh, it's be been running by this guy, John Korngold. He's got, you know, lots of industry experience. Uh, now he's working for Blackstone. It, uh, from, from what I understand, it looks like they, they put together this fund to go out and buy buy companies much like SPACs are doing like a SPAC is right. looking to do a one-to-one -one. they huh. basically have a private fund now where they're they're looking to buy companies between 200 and 400 million so you figure an average of 300 million right and at four and a half billion they're looking to buy up 15 companies uh John Korngold was quoted as as saying that they're they're looking for companies that are already making a profit okay so that probably rules out uh, Virgin Orbit which apparently is looking to uh to go the SPAC route. And you said 
the 300, are they looking for companies that are each valued at 300 million or 300 million altogether? They're looking to purchase companies, different companies in the 200 to 400 million dollar range. Okay. On average. Okay. So, th- so they could go above that. So it's a big fun, big fun then. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the guy that bet $2 billion on Bumble and has already seen a $7 billion return on that. So they could be gobbling up some of these same companies that SPACs are looking for and looking at. The average SPAC deal in 2020 was 371 million. So mm-hmm. I feel like this is this is the hedge fund version of getting in on the SPAC game. But they're not taking anything public. They're they're buying them for their own portfolio. That sounds more like venture capitalism than anything else. Right? It's like a, a private mutual fund for venture capitalists. So, you know, if, if, if you want, the only way we could get involved is to just buy shares in Blackstone, BX. Mm-hmm. You know, they do have a lot of money. Yeah. And they do make a lot of money. So, you know. Might not, I might not be a bad bet. I think it's worth looking at. Yeah, yeah. BX. Throw that in your long term. That, uh, that, that's the. Uh, that about wraps up my news. Uh, I've got nothing else. I think we can move on to some stocks. All right, let's move on and talk about some stocks. Here we come, trading on the street. Get the craziest gains from when we're in too deep. Hey, hey we're just two bulls. Smashing through a china shop We're so glad you joined us And now it's time to talk about stocks <laughs> All right I love these new songs. Yeah, it's good stuff. Good stuff. Ah, uh, all right, Kyle, you wanna you wanna lead us off talking about stocks? All right, I had a mini disaster that actually worked out okay, but oh man, it was bad. <laughs> 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 we talked about me trying to to divest some of my quick uh, GameStop holdings. I felt like my position was just a little too high for my risk appetite now seen it come back to close to where I had bought it to begin with when this whole thing started and I went to yep. sell about 25% of my holdings uh, I was trading at about 200 to 205 Wednesday on pre-market so I put an order in at 203 I was using my mm-hmm. phone and I didn't notice when it switched the order Uh-oh. <laughs> it switched it from a sell order to a buy order <laughs> <laughs> oh shit <laughs> yeah so I ended up increasing my holdings by 25% pre-market and only when I went and logged into my account to check and I was I wanted to see what it did to my margin balance. So I was like, oh, that should have pretty close to wiping out what I was carrying. And I was I was up, a, you know, almost double. Oh <laughs> like, wow! Shit. Then it dawned on me what actually happened. So like I I caught it. The stock luckily had gone up at that point. It, and I managed to sell out those shares that I bought uh, on accident, along with the original 25 I was trying to sell, 25% I was trying to sell at $214. Okay. So, well. yeah, I made $11 a share on it, but <laughs> that could have gone south in a hurry. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Always check your orders before you place them or confirm them. My fat thumbs have screwed me over uh, before. I know this game. Yeah. Phone trading is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate using my phone. I usually only do it in kind of a last resort. Uh, I don't know why I thought I could get away with it then. For, for me, it's waking up early and trading before I'm actually awake and I've had my caffeine and whatnot. Right. That's that's what gets me more often than not. But <laughs> I find if I'm going about my 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 day and my morning because I'm I'm in mountain time, I, I've got I've got if I'm not using my phone, I you know, I'm not trading. Like I don't mm-hmm. I don't have my laptop with me everywhere I go and you know, so I'm kind of forced to do it, but it's so easy to hit those wrong buttons. Well, the only I think the main reason why I was using my phone is I was trying to use my work computer less to look at the stock portfolios because I just went through and updated something. I wanted to make sure they weren't trying to watch what I was doing at work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's just watching the market all day. Yeah. So I think that's why I tried to do it, but uh still. The last thing I wanted to talk about in stocks isn't related to necessarily a move. But uh, if you remember last week, we were talking about Cresco Labs raising, uh, what was it, a billion dollars in funds? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then we're also talking about like all the other pot companies that were kind of doing the same thing. It's speculating mm-hmm. on whether there's going to be some M&As coming. Mergers and acquisitions. Uh, the first one just happened for Cresco. Uh, they got a foothold in Massachusetts after spending $90 million to acquire a company called Ooh. Cultivate. So, yeah, Cre- that's the the one that I hold. Been holding that one for a while. It's a nice little boost from that. But, I mean, that's $90 million out of the $1 billion they raised. So, I'm assuming we're going to see some more of those. Wow. Oh, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, you might see some volatility yeah. in that share price short term. But it sounds like they're going to grow bigger and bigger long term. Well, no, no, no. Because this, this was a cash deal. They oh. weren't using stuff. Oh, so this is just going to push 
your stock up. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. As long as people like the deal. Uh, yeah, giving them a foot or uh, an entry into the Massachusetts market, I think, is uh, big for them. They just recently introduced themselves into Florida. They've been growing mm. like crazy. So Cresco Labs. I think I saw too something about Democrats wanting to reintroduce the cannabis banking law into the Senate again. That was the one that I think the Republicans either shot down or just ignored completely. Yeah. So there, there's some rumblings going on that, that maybe we might see some laws change here soon. I'm not going to say complete legalization, but they might at least allow uh, some of these cannabis companies to actually, you know, bank. <laughs> I'm wondering just now, hearing you say that, if cannabis companies aren't forced to use things like cryptocurrencies for their cash flow. Um, I don't know. I thought they just do mostly all cash business. I don't know. I know when I go to a dispensary, yeah. they have different apps, different cash apps where they're like, we'll accept money from this cash app. And it mm -hmm. just bypasses the bank altogether. And I'm, I'm able to just right. pay with, with my cash app. Uh, although I mean, ca cash app is an app. Mm. I, I don't, anyway, I don't remember the specific one. Each dispensary yeah. uses a different one. That's, that's the problem. Anyway, does that conclude all your stock moves? Yes, it does. Take it away, Dan. Yeah, I basically, I already talked about my sundial shares and, and the earnings fiasco. Because I sold covered calls, I was not <laughs> able to sell those shares after market. Right. I wanted to sell when it, when it, when it spiked on the, on the earnings news expecting it to, to, to have at least a little pullback. Uh, obviously, it had a full pullback, like it spiked up and then went right back down. Uh, but yeah. I, don't, I am not at a level of trading where Ameritrade will let me do that. It knows those shares oh. are part of a covered call and was just like, no, no, you can't. You're, it, it literally said, you don't have the trading yeah. level to perform that trade. You're not that fancy, asshole. <laughs> yeah, selling naked options, I think you need at least uh, level two. Yeah. Options level two on TD Ameritrade. I, I apparently only have level one. I don't know. Uh, so my, yeah, so my Sundial shares still have them. The, the only other company I have shares in right now is Ideanomics, I-D-E-X. Uh, I also still covered mm -hmm. calls on them, but those have now expired. Worthless. So uh, I just collected those sweet, sweet Woo! premium. Yay! So I still have the shares and deciding what I want to do with them. I'm probably just going to sell another set of covered calls for a month and hold on to the shares. I've got some ideas on that, but I'll talk about it in options. Okay. I'll tell you what I did with Jumia. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. The other thing that I have to go over real quick in stocks is I did start getting on top of and making my momentum list of 52 week highs. So I thought I would oh, nice. share with you listeners if, if you are momentum, if you, if you like momentum investing of like, hey, this is going up and it could keep going up. JBL. Jabil Incorporated has just been going up all week in their new 52-week highs every day. I'm looking at their their five-day chart, and they opened uh, about 48.50 in the week, and they ended the week mm -hmm. at uh, 51. They did have earnings on Tuesday, and it seems people liked those earnings. That would sound like it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so here's an example not like sundial where the company had their earnings it shot up from that four yeah yeah it looks like they closed monday at a close to 49 and then it shot up to just about 51 and then kind of dipped down and back up and dipped down and back up and and ended at 5105 uh the high for the week was 5158 yeah, it sounds like thinking he found another rocket ship or, or what? It could be. Could be. JBL. The only the only other one on the list that uh, I consider worth mentioning, just because it's a large cap, Honda Motors has done, two, it ended Friday, two new 52-week highs in a row. I know, I know Boeing did the same thing last week, so maybe, maybe I don't know, maybe you want to <laughs> yeah. bet, you, maybe you want to short Honda. <laughs> <laughs> so it's either going to go up more or it's going to go down, uh, is what you're saying. <laughs> This might be a list of fathers or a list of rapid risers. We don't know. We don't know. Uh, so, yeah, well, some of these could really be a good straddle. We, we, we talk about that in options. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I, don't, I haven't been getting good uh, percentages on it. Anyway, it could be, th some of these could be uh, straddles. We'll talk about that in options. But uh, Honda is rated on TD Ameritrade as an 8 for outperform. Mm -hmm. So the consensus is, is that uh, their stock is undervalued. The analysts seem to like it, so it couldn't possibly go down, right? All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that JBL company is is a ten out of ten on the the 
the analyst rating. So make a note now so I can make sure I put them on my watch list because I want to keep an eye on them too. Anything else before we go to our... That concludes uh, stocks. You know what that brings us to, Kyle? The slim pickings that is earnings. The slim pickings that is earnings. Let's, uh, let's cue that earnings music. My motto's always been when I'm right, it's right. So I'll wait and watch the charts and the change in price. When the movement's mostly finished at the end of the day. And we know the common earnings gonna move it my way. Skyrockets in sight. Earnings call delight. Earnings call delight. <laughs> 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 All right, Dan. Uh, like I said, the, the pickings are getting slim, but there's some quality names uh, uh, popping up on here. Got nothing on Monday that caught my eye. Uh, on Tuesday, we've got Adobe, Paychex, P-A-Y-X, and then GameStop. GameStop is the one that's got me all confused. Yeah? You know, we talked before about uh, the PS3 sales, and everyone's thinking that they're going to report some decent earnings. The, the PS5 sales? PS5, yeah, sorry. Oh, did I just date myself again? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so everyone's expecting them to report some really good earnings based on those holiday sales and the new PS5 uh, console change. But I'm also wondering, okay, so they couldn't have done anything during this whole, you know, short squeeze that's been going on for the last two months because they knew too much about these earnings that they're about to report. So if any news is going to come out, like if they're trying to share or, you know, uh, do like a share offering or something like that. This would be the time that they would announce that, I would think. Mm -hmm. So I have a little bit of concern about something like that coming out. Uh, but then on the other hand, this is also the time when I would expect them to make an appointment if they're going to promote Ryan Cohen to, you know, CEO or, or give him another higher leadership spot in the company. So there could be good news coming out or there could be bad news, but I think there's probably going to be something coming out here that's going to cause that stock to go crazy. If it wasn't so expensive for the premiums on those, it'd probably be worth put, putting a straddle on here, but I'm not going to spend six grand in premiums just to buy one of each. Right. That is the the bet, though. The, the best bet to make is GME is not going to go sideways. Right. It's just not. <laughs> I would bet a lot of money that it doesn't. I was considering using it for my bet pick this week, shorting it. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> but, you know, if Ryan Gowen gets announced as the new CEO or new uh, whatever the position is, they just vac vacated, uh, then that could be a loser in a real hurry. <laughs> All right, the rest of the let's round out the rest of these earnings. Uh, we've got CNXC on Wednesday. That's one of our pickums. Uh, General Mills GIS mm. is also on Wednesday, along with Winnebago. Apparently, Winnebago has been seeing a lot more demand, uh, probably thanks to this COVID. Because if you want to do any traveling, I guess people are just going out and buying fucking RVs, so that way they don't have to stay in hotels. No, man, it's more grim than that. Or are they trying to? They think it's going to be the end. People can't afford houses. Oh. They're moving into Winnebago's because they can't afford a place to live. What? But fucking Winnebago's cost just as much as a fucking house now. Oh. Like the most popular one that's been selling is like 180 some thousand dollars. Oh, I'm, I must be way off. God damn. That's, that's, that is. <laughs> yeah. Wow. 180 grand. That's their most popular one. I think that's what I saw in the article. Yeah. Their earnings is on Thursday, Wednesday, you say? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I'm sure some of that's probably already built into the price it's trading at right now, but I'd be curious to see what, what it does. Um, I've got nothing on my list that caught my eye on Thursday, but I did see Riot. It's not confirmed, but uh, there's uh, it's on the calendar for Friday the 26th. Okay. We, we, we've seen them before. What does Riot do? It's called, it says blockchain, right? Riot Blockchain, that's the name of the company? What the hell do they do? Are they just like a crypto miner or what? Yeah, focused on gaining exposure to the blockchain ecosystem through its cryptocurrency mining operations, internally developed businesses, All joint right. ventures, and target investments in the sector. All right, there you go. That wraps up what I've got for earnings. Ooh, well, is that a bell I hear? Schools? Schools in session? Schools in session? Well, they paid a lot of money for the show to talk about this, and we don't think that will drop it on time. By the time we cash the checks and the contents in the press We're on the Discord just in time to see our pride fly by It's alright, cause it pays for the show <laughs> uh, Oh, there's our, our new song Dated ourselves there <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah So folks, we got paid $110 from a third party via PayPal To talk about Sweet Earth Holdings today <laughs> Ooh, What? Get that money <laughs> Paid 
company Sweet Earth Holdings. It's a Canadian company that trades on the Canadian Stock Exchange under SE, and the American Stock Exchange is under SEHCF. And that's an over the counter. That is an over the counter, yes. Tell us about it, Dan. Well, you know, I love the marijuana industry. I see it as an exploding, growing industry. Here's an exciting, exciting Canadian company that is growing worldwide. They've got plantations in Spain and Panama and Japan. They just got a new business venture to, to, to do Europe with a, with a European company. It's, it's great stuff. The compounded annual growth rate of this global CBD market, I've seen numbers from 25 to 59 to 125%. So this, this industry in the next five years could, could get upwards of $90 billion, $89 billion industry. That's, that's the industry this company is, is playing around in. And that, that's always great to be in a growing industry. They've also already have a, a well-diversified product line. Uh, they've got the infrastructure in place currently. So, I mean, they're not trying to raise capital to try to, you know, build facilities. Like Dan just mentioned, the global distribution network. I mean, they've got all the keys in place to, to really be successful down the line. Uh, another thing is they've got a three-year lockup period for their in- insider holdings. Executives and management team are going to hold their shares for three years. Folks, please keep in mind that we are getting paid to talk uh, positively about this company. Uh, if you like it, uh, what we're saying, you've got links in the episode description where you can check it out. Just please make sure you do your own research. Yep, yep. Uh, check into financials, all that stuff that goes with it. Talk to a licensed uh, financial advisor if necessary. Uh, we are not that, so... You know, another thing I like about this company is uh, their CEO director, Peter Espig, uh, he's a former Goldman Sachs and Olympus Capital exec, mm. and he's been involved in a lot of SPACs. Okay. And he, so he's got a lot of experience across many business sectors on, on an international scale. So, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. The leadership's got credentials. The products uh, are winning awards yep. at industry trade shows. They've got a muscle recovery rub that people apparently are going nuts for. Is that the one Warren Moon sponsored in June? It is. Go Go Oilers! Oilers. So this is a newer small cap company, but it's in an industry that's growing, and it's got all the ingredients to really grow and to take a large chunk of those CBD sales. They're going to do it with their experienced R&D team that's already successfully developed a proprietary strain. Uh, They're going to do it because they're leading cultivators, superior manufacturers, with state-of-the-art facilities, they've got global distribution channels, and an award-winning brand. So I'm super excited to see what the future has in store for Sweet Earth Holdings. Yeah, link will be in the episode description if you want to check it out. Like I said. Yeah, check out the link. See if it's see if it's the kind of company that speaks to you. All right. It's all right, because it pays for the show. <laughs> um... Oh, God. I hope they don't get mad at that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, they'll love it. They'll love it, right? I loved it. Uh, we got to make it entertaining at least, right? Right. All it right. is very entertaining. Folks, we're so glad that you're, you're with us here in the, ch- in, in the China shop. And uh, I'd just like to take a moment to, to let you know that uh, we're brought to you by Sue Pullen at Fairway Independent Mortgage, an equal housing lender. Sue Pullen is a certified mortgage advisor who focuses on finding the right product for you and your needs. She's got over 20 years of experience. And she's helped thousands of homeowners, whether it's purchasing, refinancing, or even reverse mortgages. Sue knows what to do. She can get it done, and she can get it done right. She's licensed in 25 states and growing, so reach out and see what Sue can do for you. Best way to reach her is to just give her a call, 520-977-7904, or you can shoot an email her way. S. Pullen at fairwaymc.com. Fairway Independent Mortgage has an MLS number of 2289. Sue Pullen has an MLS number of 206048. And that email again is S. Pullen at fairwaymc.com. And that phone number is 520-977-7904. All right. And if you haven't checked out the, the interview we did with Sue, uh, that, that was a good one, especially if you're interested in learning more about credit and oh, yeah. mortgages and all oh, that yeah. fun stuff you know, being a grown up entails. I, I learned several things about credit scores and building my credit from that interview. Mm-hmm. With her. Uh, I really, really, really did genuinely. And you, it's in the interview there. There's a moment there where I'm like, wait, what? 
I, I was just surprised at how much a mortgage lender would know about, you know, I guess it makes sense that they would know how to help somebody increase right? their credit because they're using that to try to get them better rates. But... always dealing with credit scores. Yeah. Mm. You know, that brings us up to options talk. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to this. A little less conversation, a little more options, please. All this volatility just ain't bothering me. A little more puts, a little less small, a little less puts, a little more calls. Put the trades and open up your ears, baby, it's time for options. It's time for options, baby. Okay, uh, as part of my ongoing plan to try to be a better trader after being uh, identifying one of my biggest weaknesses with our, our favorite psychologist guest, Richard Friesen. Oh yeah, Friesen, he's so good. I went through and I closed out my F-cell calls. I had $18 calls. Uh, I closed them out right before they reported earnings because um, they were already down and I knew that once those earnings came out, it was unlikely that they were going to see what I paid in that premium plus the $18 strike. Uh, good thing I did because I took a much much smaller loss than if I would have held them. Mm, uh, awesome. Keeping with the F sell theme, though, I still like the stock and I still want to have some of it. So I also, when I sold those calls, I also sold a March 26, sixteen dollar put right before those earnings to take advantage of that high Vega. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't remember the exact price, but I think the total cost, if I had to buy the shares, my break even point somewhere around fourteen dollars and fifty cents a share. Not bad. Which it's trading pretty close to that right now. Uh, I think after hours it came back up to around fifteen, but. Uh, you know, I don't really care. This is a stock that can move in a hurry, and I still think that once Biden starts announcing some of his alternative energy stuff that he wants to do, mm-hmm. uh, probably see it, you know, start to rebound pretty quick. Um, after they reported, I bought another cover call at the fifteen dollars strike too, and that the cost basis on that one was at thirteen dollars and fifty cents per share. Uh, that one felt like free money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of hoping it doesn't exercise, but if it does, I'll just sell another one. Yeah. Let's see, the other two moves I made, I did a, a trade in CVM after you're talking about it on the Discord. Yeah. Uh, and that one almost bit me in the ass. I, I, I didn't do a whole lot of research on it. I just saw Dan talking about it and he showed his premium that he got for what was a $5 put you sold. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, I looked at the stock and I see it getting resistance around 1750 So I'll just sell a 1750 expiring on Friday and get the same price he did and show Dan how much smarter I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're not paying attention to something, you probably shouldn't be, you know, just jumping in after doing the barest minimum of research. And you didn't even follow my move. You made your own move on the same company. I made my own move thinking it was better. I was like, oh, this stock's not going to drop below 1750. Yeah. Uh, it did. It did uh, pretty hard. In the last hour of trading, it was down almost to 1650 before it finally bounced back up. It closed at 1770, so I just narrowly avoided a disaster there for what's the $35 premium on something that, you know, just no business doing uh and something i tried to close out beforehand too is it kept getting closer and closer to that point but the fucking spread on that thing was so ridiculous oh Oh. (laughs) so yeah that was uh that was not my best moment of the week but my best moment of the week was had to been jumia the stock has been getting hammered because they just announced that they're they signed a deal for issuing i think it was like 18 million new shares something around there with uh, i think it was Citigroup. Mm-hmm. so you know anytime you dilute the the float by 20 percent, you're gonna see a, a drop in price oh yeah so i sold basically a straddle at the 45 dollar strike Uh, These are shares that I own too. So I was selling it against the shares that I owned on the call side. So the call side is covered. Basically, the the only way I can lose money on this is if it drops below uh, the price I paid on the premium from that $45 Mm -hmm. strike, which is about $34 or $33.60, I think. Right. Uh, I really like this move because I I mean, $11.40 on that premium was just absolutely insane. Yeah. To the point where I almost did it again. (laughs) I like to dip my toes in the water before I just jump into something full force. So. Uh, I may I may think about this one a little bit more over the weekend. I may try to do it again on Monday. But that's already made like, you know, 50 bucks on just the, the decay of, on time in Vega. Right. It really works in your favor. And, and like uh, David Modell was saying, those 30 to 60 days, like when you get in there and, and it, starts, mm-hmm. it starts to really close in under those 30 days, oh man, that theta just burns it right off. 
I really like this move, selling the straddles on stocks that I like, that I'm long on, that I already have a position. Um, from the, the savvy options plays I did before we learned that it was a sucker's game mm-hmm. to, to be buying the contracts rather than selling. Yeah. Uh, I still have shares in Bed Bath & Beyond, Sonos, and Nordstrom. Uh, all companies have been doing fairly well, even when tech has been getting hammered. So I'm looking to probably do the same thing with, with these shares too. Uh, I tried to do it with Bed Bath & Beyond on Friday, but I didn't get any takers uh on that one though i looked to buy a put too just to protect my bottom end right so instead of getting like a six dollar 50 cent premium for for selling that straddle it would have been about 550 but you know to take a dollar off my potential return to be protected on both ends of it right seems like a no-brainer oh and it especially makes sense when you think of a put as an insurance contract yeah it's the reverse of the bull put spreads i was trying to experiment with last week Mm, mm -hmm. so it's just the other way around i sell the closer to the money one and then buy the the further out the money one. So that way I'm still a net seller, but it, it caps my potential lo- uh, losses and caps my potential gains as well. But I can also sleep a little better at night knowing that I'm not going to, you know, if something happens and... It's way less risky. It's just way <laughs> less risky. Yeah. But yeah, that about wrapped up. Straddle, selling straddles on companies you're long on. I, I really do like that idea. So yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot more of that probably here in the next week or two and be reporting on those too. Well, we'll see if it's a good idea or not. We'll see. <laughs> Tune in next time. <laughs> Tune in next time. All right, is it uh, my turn? I think it's your turn. Yeah. All right. So I, I of course, all my action is in options. I'm trying to mostly sell puts. I've really, really been digging most of my portfolio sitting as cash, just covering these puts. As mm-hmm. the market had all its tumult through the week, I was pretty steady, and and I loved that. Like I was logging in, and I was I was seeing some movement. But w- w- the main movement I was seeing would be if I would. Uh, sell some more puts so right. so and then of course that's just money in the account so i'm really really enjoying that but usually get a better premium on a covered call than uh, a cash covered put right so it's not the end of the world if they do exercise well, i think just in general didn't david t- say that more people are buying calls than they're selling than buying puts i think it's probably just more of a supply and demand thing yeah or maybe they're just maybe it's just a bullish move. But hey, guess what? Selling a put is also bullish. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so so anyway, uh, uh, this, so this week was a big week for options expirations, as we all know. You know Friday they expired. Um, I got to see wake up the this quadruple witching. <laughs> the witching. Uh, got to wake up this morning and see that of the six puts that I had expiring, uh, five of them expired worthless. So I just collected the premiums, no muss, no fuss. And one, uh, OGI, which they had that merger a week ago, they announced and yeah, and their price shot up. Uh, I had originally sold $4 puts wanting to, to buy it to enter the wheel, right? I was like, I want 100 shares. I'll, I'll sell the put to, to start the wheel. They, this, this is hilarious. I think this is hilarious because I'd sold a $4 put. They ended Friday at $3.99. And <laughs> uh, Ameritrade will automatically exercise them if they are a penny off of the, <laughs> the strike. Hey, but you're still, as long as it holds that, you're still uh, still in the green. Because you got to collect that premium I that brings down your cost basis. did. So because of that premium, I actually bought these 100 shares at uh, 375 at $3.75 a share. So right. I can I can straight sell these Monday morning. If I get more than $3.75, I've made a profit. But I think what I'm going to do is, after talking to you, uh, I think I'm going to sell the straddle. I really like that. I'm going to sell the $4 straddle. And I'll collect hopefully a hundred and five dollar premium for combined uh, call and covered call and, and cash covered put. So I'm basically betting that uh, the price doesn't drop below two ninety five. Plus your other premium you already sold. Oh, to get in. Don't forget, yeah, the whole trade, the whole trade. Oh, from from the very beginning, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm still yeah. I'm still twenty. You still got another quarter on still that. Still got another quarter on that. So well, I'm I want to do it just because. I don't I, I don't want to zoom in and just only be selling puts like I, I like I like play right. I still like playing around. Uh, yeah, I want to see where it goes. And oh, you got to experiment with the wheel. Yeah. And this is a pot company that uh, especially now that British American Tobacco owns a 20 percent to stake. I don't think they're going away. Yeah, No kidding. They're not going away. So yeah. so I'm willing to be long on OGI. And right now at four dollars. So we're talking even even if I had to just buy the hundred shares, like if Monday 
if, if I wanted to do another one. Uh, you're talking an $800 investment, buy 100 shares, have enough to buy a second 100 for the put, and then uh, uh, and then right away, I get paid... For the call. No, uh, I, I would need 400 cash set aside, sell oh, the put. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. Right away... I'd be getting $105 uh, back. That's 10% of the 800 is 80, you know, so you're already talking 12 and a half percent, boom, right off the bat. That's back. awesome. Yeah, and yep. so as for, for, for the month, if if it goes up, the put's worthless. I don't have to worry about that. And then all, all I have to worry about is, okay, I, I sold my shares at the, the, the $4 when I bought them for 375 Except not really, because you got to think of it as you're selling it at five and change, right? If it exercises, you basically just sold it. You sold it ahead of time for whatever the premium is, plus the strike price if it sells. That's how I look at it. Uh, but yeah, I'm so excited for the straddle. Uh, uh, I sold, uh, as Kyle mentioned, trying to try make this a little quicker. Kyle mentioned a CVM. What I started doing was uh, I found on Thinkorswim the, the ability to use that implied volatility to get the likely the statistical likelihood of the range of prices and they let me move it up and down so mm -hmm. i can do things like look at uh cvm and they were at like 18 dollars a share and and i was looking at april 16th puts and they had five dollar puts and, and uh, they were given a 36 cent premium and so i'm like low locking up 500 dollars for for 36 dollars is is seven percent and thinkorswim says there is a 90 per, like 89 90% chance that that stock price stays above $5. So that says to mm -hmm. me that there's a you know 9 in 10 chance I just collect that premium. So that's what I've really started yeah, doing. Yeah, that's a big movement too, yeah. Uh uh yeah, that it would take a lot of movement to get there, so I'm like, okay, uh I'll sell I'll sell that insurance <laughs> contract. One, I don't I I'm trying to trust the think or swim. But I also don't think that if it goes down that far, I don't think the company is going to go away and go bankrupt. I, I, I think it's 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 right. not a huge risk that if I have that 500 shares, well, it was a $36 premium. Uh, so we're, we're talking three, four. It's got to stay above 464 before I break even. Well, so I think this is the reason why Modell said to, to start with, you know, blue chip companies, <laughs> companies cap. that you know are going to be around Big cap. forever. Yeah, because <laughs> some of these small cap companies that trade options, they could go away. They can move really quick and really fast. You can lose your shirt pretty quick on them. If you want to just get a feel for it, yeah. The last trade that I did, which this this is hilarious. We His example was, yeah, an insurance company... Could, Sometimes they sell insurance to somebody. The next day, that person gets really sick. So <laughs> I sold uh, IDRA. They were at uh, uh, five five dollars something. They're just over five, right? And I sold two dollar puts, and I was getting uh, eighteen cents a contract premium. <laughs> so that's eighteen bucks for two hundred dollars. I'm like, that's whoa, you know that that's nine percent. I'm getting 18 bucks. Wow. Okay. That's solid. Oh yeah. I'll do that. Did you know that they're going to be reporting on their results of a, a trial drug that they had submitted to the FDA? Kyle, do you think I do that kind of research? No, <laughs> I just looked at the thinkorswim statistical probability and it was over 70. So I said, yeah. And three hours, three hours after I sold this put. <laughs> <laughs> the company released news that their their drug trial it did not hit its mark. It didn't. Their, yeah, their their drug pretty much was no. It, they would, it was a drug cocktail, their drug and a Bayer drug, and it, it was like mm -hmm. no statistical difference between just the Bayer drug alone. So it was super bad news yeah. for them, and their stock dropped down to it's at a dollar ninety eight right now. So it dropped from five five yep. and change like five oh five down to a dollar ninety eight. And these are April 16th puts. So it's already in the money. <laughs> oh, three hours. <laughs> and the volatility on it's going to be high. So oh, yeah. If you try to close that out, that premium is going to be really high. Yeah. Right now, uh, if I close it out, I'm taking uh, a 20, about a $20 loss on, on mm. two, 218. So, I mean, like total loss. Like I would, be, I would have that. I turn that two hundred dollars into one hundred and eighty dollars. That's not bad for, for every put. It's it's not bad. Yeah. And and Monday I probably am going to close that out because because goddamn that. Yeah, just, you'd probably get out of that one. Just call it a loss. <laughs> anyway, it's not good for a pharmaceutical company to have their 
their drug do nothing. <laughs> never good. Never good. Do we got any options alerts? Uh, before we jump into that real quick, though, I just want to talk a little bit about last week's ones that we looked at. I specifically picked all ones that were expiring last Friday just because I wanted to see how they did. I picked a couple with higher number, sorry, higher investment amounts and a couple that were lower that just, you know, stocks that I kind of like. I like the move that they were doing. All four of them finished worthless. Wow. All four. So let's see. Just to, to go back, there is Tmus, YYY, Oracle, and JMI. I'm sorry, YYY expired April 16th. So, so the three that expired yesterday all finished out of the money. Oh, wow. Okay. So if you get an options alert, you should probably sell those options. <laughs> That's kind of what it's looking like. <laughs> okay. Okay. I picked ones here that I, and I started annotating whether they're bullish or not, but I got a mix of calls and puts. Uh, most of them are bullish. There's one that's neutral. And just go through the list here. IIVI, one of our X pickums now, I think at this point. Uh, seven sixteen eighty five dollar call at three dollars and seventy cents. That was one hundred and sixty seven thousand dollars. A bullish indicator. Uh, SBUX. Starbucks. May twenty first, hundred ten dollar call at four dollars a contract. Uh, two point eight million. Uh, that one was the neutral one. GT one twenty one twenty two seventeen dollar put at three dollars a contract. Uh, five hundred and twenty nine thousand. That one was bullish. Then we had a FedEx twelve seventeen three hundred dollar call twenty dollars and fifty cents a contract. One point two million. Also bullish. And last one PDD one twenty one twenty two. $140 put at $26.30 a contract, mm. $1.5 million. A lot of expensive, expensive ones in there mixed in with some cheaper ones. but And a lot of these ones are far out this time, too, which is kind of interesting. All right. That's a that's a that's a fun sound right there. <sighs> my good was five of my six puts expiring worthless. That felt really good. <laughs> five of the six you sold. Yes. Make sure you preface that. Five of the six puts <laughs> I sold expired worthless. All my covered calls expired worthless. So so you get to do it again. You get to do it again. Keep playing the wheel. My good has got to be the J. I'm calling it good. J M I A. The options trade. I made a huge premium for a stock that I want to keep. Yeah. Uh, like I said, in options, I, I'm gonna keep trying. I like this strategy, and I'm gonna keep trying to use it. If it does eventually burn me. I'll definitely be telling everybody on here about it. So <laughs> either it's gonna be really good, or it's gonna crash and burn somewhere. You have so many ways to win in that scenario. Crashing and burning and totally disappearing is is not a likely scenario for a lot of companies yeah i'm happy with it if i get to buy some more shares at basically 36 then i'm even more happy yeah i love your jumia trade it was great i'm that's why i'm copying it with ogi on monday <laughs> right, what was your bad my note taking and my posting of my trades on the discord i am <laughs> super unorganized and when you sent me your notes and i was looking at them I was like, yeah, I need to be, I need to be updating this through the week. I need to be logging it. Uh, I, I like to, you, it's just, I've lived my life kind of, uh, unorganized and, and a bad <laughs> note taker. So, uh, yeah, it was bad and I need to get better at it for, for the sake of myself, if not the show. <laughs> like I, I start, I put together that spreadsheet. I'll send you a copy of it so you can start posting your weekly, you know, all your moves on one sheet so people can look at that. Yeah. Who are on the discord. Yeah. What was your bad? My bad was fucking around with CVM. Mm. <laughs> it was something I had no business doing for such a small amount for the amount it could have gone wrong that it just wasn't worth it. I saw your trade. I didn't think about it too much other than just a, the barest minimum of checking the resistance levels. My motivation and just the not do it. It's okay if I want to try to beat you. I just need to actually do some fucking research. <laughs> right. You need to, to try do to it make right. a smart move. Yeah, because <laughs> rather than just on a whim. Well, my ugly was that the IDRA uh, go, shooting down sixty five percent three hours after I I sold a put. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So yeah. 
both of us no research i didn't do the research beyond <laughs> looking at the statistical likelihood that was like that's enough research for me i don't care what the company does i don't care what they got their news what's happening with them well i should care there's a lot of good reasons to care <laughs> yeah uh, what was your ugly i think you know what my ugly was did it involve gamestop it did and it was gonna be my bad i was gonna i had it on my bad list until i started thinking about it and i remember that this is not the first time that i've done this with this stock with this very stock if you remember when i when i first bought it the first time i was trying to do a, a quick momentum trade and try to make you know a few bucks when it was shooting up uh the first when the squeeze first happened that's mm. how i got into this stock was by fucking up and instead of selling shares that i had bought i accidentally bought more of them <laughs> that's right i remember that yeah. yeah so yeah. the fact that i've done this twice uh that that makes this an ugly now it's no longer bad that's ugly you can't make the same mistake mm -hmm. multiple times and mm -hmm. expect to do well in this game at some point you have to learn from them you would think right god damn it <laughs> i'm gonna try <laughs> I will learn, <laughs> damn it. I can do this. And you know, I guarantee you, I wouldn't have learned anything from my mistakes if we hadn't started doing this show. So if nothing else. Yes. Oh, God. Doing this show has been so good for my yeah. own learning process as well. All right, Dan. Is it time for the showdown? It's time for the bet. Stop. Ah, in the center of a universe. Uh, Kyle, you're the biggest loser, so, uh... Alright, I've been going back and forth between these two. Um, I was looking at GRWG to start out. Oh, I can't remember what they are, so I'm gonna look it up again real quick. The, the marijuana grow company? Except they don't grow. They sell to the growers. Okay, so they're business to business in the marijuana industry. They're in the marijuana industry, but they sell to all the people who produce. They sell all the agricultural equipment, the grow lights, all that good stuff. Also, they are reporting their earnings on, uh, I don't think it's confirmed, but I think it's on the 29th. If the earnings would have been this week, I probably would have gone with them, but they are not going to be my pick. Just one that... I may be keeping an eye on here coming up, especially with all the positive news in the pot industry. Uh, no, my pick this week is going to be M.O. M.O. Missouri? I'm going to butcher the name. <laughs> Altrera? Altria? Altria? Altria Group. They're the ones who make the Philip Morrison cigarettes. Okay. okay. It's a consumer staple somehow, too. People who smoke have to have them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's definitely a staple. Yeah. Well, we've been seeing, you know, the consumer staples with some solid movement in the last month or so. Uh, apparently, people are really liking this stock just as bond yields rise. And if you look back at their charts, you can see a real steady, just nice and steady eddy growth coming out of it. I think I'm going to try and ride this one for a little bit. Stop with the stupid volatile stocks that have been, you know, kicking my ass. I'm just going to pick one that's that I'm long on already. I have shares. I love this stock. It's, it's a great dividend fucking performer. Uh, I picked it on a, our pick them list you know if you get in before the 24th then you you're eligible for those uh those dividends on april 30th i think is when they actually deliver it's a stock to me that's that's got some real good momentum that's going right now in an industry that seems to be benefiting from these rising bond yields and everything else that's going on uh mo that's my bet i'm actually you know i i was talking about it earlier uh uh jbl i'm gonna pick jabil incorporated the, the it small cap it company you said you weren't gonna pick them and maybe i just said that as like a misdirection so you would pick something else yeah, all right you ready for a random i am very ready for a random c o h u Looks like it's a semiconductor stock. Well, good, because they're probably getting hammered with tech. <laughs> Let me look at the one month. Uh, kind of flat, actually. Bit erratic, though. Their one year looks great, though. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> <That's another six laughs> <month>. <laughs> Well, they probably will go sideways, and 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 mine's gonna drop down, and I'm gonna lose the whole thing. God damn it! I'm switching to C O H U. <laughs> what? You can't bet the random. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could short it if you wanted to. Right. One, me or the random. One of us. <laughs> one of us is gonna lose. One of us is gonna lose. <laughs> Oh, so there you have it, folks. That's our new bet. I've got JBL. Kyle's got MO. The random has got COHU. Come back next week. Find out which uh, which one of us is crying the most because we 
these bet picks have gotten harder than when they were in a roaring bull market <laughs> last fall. I know, right? What happened? <laughs> so much easier to pick winners when it's all going up. Well, that's one of the reasons I went back to moment- <laughs> the momentum thing for the bet picks, because uh, uh, that's yeah. when I was finding the ones that were giving me those big returns. Yeah. Uh, a- anyhow, that's, uh, that's the bet. Remember, folks, uh, if you like our show, please just let us know by rating and subscribing on your platform of choice. We're so glad you're here. And we're, we're so glad the shop is growing and every, everything's going well. Uh, we're, we're just uh, pleased as a peach. Is that a saying? Is that a phrase? <laughs> Do people say that? I, I think in the South you make up whatever you want to say is happier than a squirrel with two nuts. <laughs> <laughs> if you're from the South, please l- let us know uh, if either of those are sayings because we are ignorant. <laughs> uh, if you like our show and hate social media, then just, just tell all your friends. And uh, if you have no friends and hate social media, and you want to just donate to the show, you can follow that PayPal link there in the, the dis- episode description. We'll, we'll help you f- find more friends if you do. We'll, we'll, that, that, all that donation money goes straight to finding more friends for the shop. We guarantee it. Yep. And it is a big shop. There's room for everybody. Come one, come all, step right in. We love it here. We love that you're here. And if you're looking to make some new friends, Discord. Check out that Discord. Yeah, we're on there all the time. And, uh, and until next week, folks, happy trades. Bye. Two Bulls in a China Shop is an entertainment program, and all thoughts and opinions expressed in the show belong to the hosts and not of any company. They are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual or on any specific security or investment product. It is only intended to provide entertainment about stocks and the financial industry of trading. If you make trades based on what you hear in this show, you assume all risks for those trades.